Welcome back to the channel, everyone. And before we go any further, this is the perfect pause point. Uh, <laughs> we're going to be watching a new series, uh, at least new to me. It's called Lost in the Pond. Um, we're not going to be watching every episode because he has like 800 videos. <laughs> but we're going to kind of pick and choose as we jump through them. Um, this one is British words that baffle Americans. And um, let me put it this way. Most American words baffle Americans. So... <laughs> Let's see how this goes. I, I assume Scone is going to be on here somewhere, but uh, <laughs> but yeah, let's get into it. Um, this is Lost in the Pond, by the way, if you've never seen this channel. Uh, and it's fantastic if you want to learn more about American history, uh, even as an American, because there's a good chance we weren't taught history. All right, let's get into it. Episode from Lost in the Pond. I'm Lawrence Brown, the editor of Lost in the Pond. And uh, this week I'm going to be talking about uh, all of those kind of uh, British English words that uh, baffle Americans mm. whenever I uh, produce them from my lovely British mouth. Uh, the, the, uh, <laughs> this idea actually comes from uh, YouTube user Mark Lockwood. So thank you for that, Mark. And uh, yeah, so wife, what are some of those? What are some of those words that you often sort of are baffled by when I say them? I'm not really baffled by a lot of words that you say anymore. We've been together 10 years. Uh, after 10 years, you sort of... Yeah. Yeah. If I, you know, walk down the street in Liverpool, I, I find it very difficult to understand most of what... I think that's his wife talking in the background. <laughs> any of them are saying to me. I, I think that's true of most of England. Uh, so they come up to you like that and uh, ask you, hey, do you want to go down the Cavern Club? I don't, I don't know why they would do that, but they might. When I first moved here, one of those one of the words was flannel, actually. Um, mm -hmm. Not as in the shirt, as Americans might think. It was the flannel. I think of it as those water bottles that we used to have, you know, uh, way back when, to keep the beds warm. Now my bed is just liquid cooled and heated. <laughs> that we would call, or that Americans would call, washcloth, uh, that you wash your body parts with. Oh. This is a bit clinical. I see. So flannel in the UK, or in, yeah, yeah, I guess in the UK, it's... It's a washcloth of some kind. Okay, cool. Yeah, I mean, it's basically the same thing. Uh, the flannel shirts we have are basically washcloths. So, sure, why not? <laughs> I asked your parents, because we live with Tara's parents um, for a bit, and uh, we, I, I needed to find a flannel, and they looked at me as if I was demanding shirts from them. Yeah. But another <laughs> another one, actually, that came up around about the same time was plaster. Uh, I'd cut my finger or something like that, and I, I said, hey... Plaster. Okay, so plaster here would be like um, um, what you use like on drywall and uh, to fill in holes and things like that. Uh, it depends on where you're located, though. That's what I grew up as being plaster. But what's British plaster? Yeah, where, where do you keep the plasters in the house? And they looked at me again as if I was a terrorist. <laughs> um, so what? What? Uh, but you, what do we call them here again? Band aids. Band -aid. oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Band aids. Yeah. Yeah, like, uh, well, for me, Band-Aid is, is the Bob Geldof band that was formed in the 80s to save poverty in Africa or to prevent it. Okay, that's pretty funny, too. <laughs> Didn't even know about that. And so I was sort of bewildered myself when they came back at me with that. So it's a two-way street. It's not just the Americans being bewildered by me. More, actually. Me Don't worry. A lot of Americans are bewildered by other Americans, especially when they go to different states. <laughs> <laughs> the amount of dumb words we have between the states that no one else talks about except in your small little location is staggering. Me being bewildered by them. The word rubbish actually uh, oh. occasionally causes confusion. Uh, not so much when I use it to mean trash, uh, but when I say that some, such and such is rubbish. Uh, that thing over there, that's rubbish. Uh, actually, I was pointing at our... Okay, what, does that mean trash regardless? Because if someone says that's rubbish, I automatically would assume it'd be that's horrible or trash, right? Lovely shelf. So it's actually a nice shelf. The from idea, Ikea, it's rubbish. Yeah, I think throws people off because <laughs> I think they think I when I point to something and say, ah, that thing's rubbish, they, they believe, I think, Americans think I'm saying that it, it literally is trash and needs right. to be put in the bin, trash can. Another one, and this is quite topical. Okay, so, I mean, yeah, like, if you point to a car and say that's rubbish, you would probably still be like, yeah, you should probably crush that car. <laughs> I don't know. I don't get that one. That one, I think, is just a little bit of a mistranslation or a little bit misconception there. Cool for the summer, I suppose, uh, despite the weather we've had in Indiana. Uh, suntan lotion. People look at me and not know what I'm talking about. What, what do you... 
okay, so that's cause that's either going to be suntan lotion is either sunscreen or, you know, actual, like, suntan lotion. <laughs> what do you think I mean when I say those phrases? Well, here we have a distinction between suntan lotion and sun burn prevention lotion, which is... Yeah. Right, suntan lotion, you want to, you know, helps, you know, make your skin less pasty like mine. Which I don't go outside, so I don't use suntan lotion, so I don't really know how it works. <laughs> um, and then sunscreen, uh, I go outside, uh, I need to use sunscreen or I burn super quick. <laughs> a completely different thing that most people use, so it's sunscreen, right? Yeah. Um, whereas suntan lotion is what you rub on yourself to keep yourself from getting too tanned, I guess, at a tanning salon. Which so. makes sense. And, and now that I think about it, I can't decide whether suntan lotion. So I guess it's the a universal um, in uh, universal term in British for uh, both of them. I guess lotion is a sort of generic British term, or if that's just my parents, I think it's my parents. Oh yeah, that could also be a thing. <laughs> I have a lot of parent-specific things that they told me how, how um, you know meant certain things when I was growing up that totally meant no, nothing close to what it was. They just say that, and I've picked it up. Mm. Well, obviously, bag. Pag. Oh, Pag. Yeah. Um, well, Pag's an odd one because I think that's kind of a more of a Grims Grimsby's where I'm from. And I think that's more of a Grimsby term. Yeah, I've never even heard that word. Um, it means to ride on the back of a bike with somebody. I think I think some people call it a backy uh, in England. Huh. Hey, do you want a backy? Uh, that would be what? Tandem? Tandem riding here? Uh, I guess it depends. A lot of tandem riding uses tandem bikes, but uh, that would still be tandem, though, right? Uh, no, I want a pag. Thank you. Uh, people think it sounds stupid. Uh, even in England, uh, yeah, people don't I know what it, it means. Is. Let's put it this way, though. Tandem riding is also stupid. Um, I'm not sure I ever use that term yet, but I do use the term Mardi, as in I'm very grumpy today. I'm feeling Mardi. <laughs> huh. But uh, Mardi is, is barely used outside of that part of the north as well, I think. Okay, so even most parts of uh, uh, England don't use certain words, obviously. Obviously... North and South. Uh, yeah, so. I believe it's used in and around Lincolnshire and maybe Yorkshire and then not really known elsewhere. Unless I'm wrong about that, you can correct me if I am. I did touch on this one uh, in a previous video, but uh, the, the term stroking, as in stroking the dog, which again, <laughs> does sound borderline illegal and I will admit that. Uh, yeah, it's a, that's a bit iffy here. <laughs> I mean, it's fine uh, if you use the context right, but most people <laughs> probably will just jump to a conclusion. Um, uh, having moved here, uh, but you guys, Americans, say petting yeah. the dog, which actually my mother... Which, by the way, you can say petting in a s really sexual way as well, so I mean, what's the difference here? I later pointed out, after watching that previous video, that that also sounds a little... Um, illegal because uh petting at least where i'm from means kissing uh when you go into the swimming pools there'll be signs that say no petting uh oh that's actually pretty funny didn't even know that <laughs> as in your you know significant other or we have that here too a exactly so you have it here and yet so each of us has these that, terms though. for being affectionate toward animals that take it a little too far don't yeah. kiss your dog I, well, I, I do kiss my dog. I don't kiss my dog in the French way. <laughs> Some people do. Well, I, I don't even have a dog. <laughs> I have cats. True. So where did that come from? Yeah. Um, but yeah, I certainly don't. <laughs> like how it's confusion when she said that. She's like, what are you talking about? No. Who, what do you mean some people do? <laughs> there it is. There's the click. Yeah, most people don't. Some people are weird, <laughs> but lots of people are weird around the world, so... Who kisses dogs in the French way? <laughs> oh, right. <laughs> this is a strange video. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait. So did you see that little edit cut right there? I think he just brain broke and he sat there for like 30 seconds before resetting. <laughs> so far. Um, <laughs> wish I had a dictionary of British English or something. <laughs> Uh, mm -hmm. If in doubt, turn to this lovely book. Interesting. By Anglotopia. Um, you can get this at uh, Amazon, of course. Oh. And let me take a look inside. It's quickly. an entire book of British slang. That's fantastic. There are lots of words in here. 
What do, I, what do I say? I'm trying to think. Oh, I did say that once. This one here. Uh, uh, lost the plot. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I say that all the time now, and I think some people don't understand what I mean. Yeah. They well, play around I've, teachers all day, so they kind of get it. I've heard that a few times, but, you know, it's definitely not used often here. Because I've read Harry Potter. association. Yeah. Of just understanding what losing the plot literally means. So. Yeah, it's someone who's gone mad. Um, huh. I've lost the plot. Oh, lost the plot just means gone mad. Okay, I just figured, you know, <laughs> forgot what was going on. I, I write for that. Chap. Chap's an odd one, isn't it, for people? Yeah, you're a fine, upstanding chap. Because that's how I talk. You know, chat. Sally, I, actually, I do chance. remember. I I do remember one instance when I used to work for Indianapolis Fringe um, back in the day. There was there was a performer who'd come over from the East Coast, and uh, I I asked him, "So, are you uh, are you part of the the Fringe Festival?" And he had to ask me again and again. Did, did you just say French Festival? Oh, that was a good one. This this one did used. To yeah, we do use chap occasionally, but that might be more regional, at least where I'm from, anyway. To confuse uh, the wife when I'd, uh, you know, we'd be talking about a food that's been in the fridge a little too long, and I'd ask her, has it gone off? And she oh. wouldn't know what. <laughs> I can see that wouldn't be a problem. Gone off or uh, spoiled. <laughs> Amen. And I, again, use that all the time now, and people don't understand. <laughs> I've indoctrinated her into the... <laughs> Uh, speaking of that one makes sense though um <laughs> it's it's a, kind of a roundabout way to say it in uh you know in the u.s but it's still the same thing going off we're gonna go off now uh not in that way um <laughs> i have showered today uh but in the sense that we're leaving today uh and so uh yeah tune in next week and indeed throughout the week uh send us your ideas for videos it um it uh, saves me a job yeah really um so <laughs> that'd be great and, uh, yeah, same for everyone in my comment section. Give me ideas to things I, I can react to so I don't actually have to do any research. <laughs> yeah, now don't forget to subscribe to us on Facebook. That's very crucial. And Twitter and to a You can go to my Twitter account. I don't have Facebook, and I don't really care if you subscribe. You can, but I always just randomly react to stuff. So <laughs> one day it's going to be Lost in the Pond. The next day it's animation. The next day after that might be music. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> but uh yeah we're gonna pause it here because that's another perfect spot to pause it on his face um that was pretty cool i liked uh seeing a lot of those uh british words a lot of them were self-explanatory to a degree and i can also see why a lot of people would kind of like do a double take <laughs> but yeah that was uh lost in the pond and that was a really fun video all right have a good day everyone